5. This is always that awkward moment to see <laughs> if it's all working. I think I am live. So let's see if there are some people finding the live stream at the moment. Uh, if it's all working. Are there any people coming? Let me see. Really, this one. Yes, I see some people coming in. Can somebody let me know if you can see me and if you can hear me? Hello, hello. I'm just gonna run, let this run for a little bit so people have the opportunity to tune in on the live stream uh, before I really start. I see a lot of messages coming in. So the live chat is supposed to be there. Uh, let me know if uh, the sound and the vision are okay. And let me know where you're from. Then uh, I will do a few uh, shout outs uh, while we're waiting for more people to join the, the chat. I already see Mark from Daytona Beach, Florida. Hi, Mark. And uh, there's somebody from Kathmandu. Oh, now the messages really come in. Let me see. Loud and clear, says Roy Dawson. Oh, excellent news. Okay, let's see. I'm going to uh, put this a little bit bigger. Pop out chat. All right, there we go. This is good. As some Dutch messages, Ronald Koopman says, hi, Norley, nice to see you. We got Brittany from Canada, uh, Marco Vovk from Slovenia, and we have somebody from Kenya, uh, Robin Kisero, um, somebody from Mumbai, Himant Kumar Shetty, Welcome, uh, somebody from Chile, Carlos Astorga, we have Mark from England. Oh, this is so awesome to see where you're all from. We have a quite a um, good worldwide <laughs> selection, I think. And uh, Mike from Nashville, what, ten, ten, TN, what is that, Tennessee or something? I don't know exactly where Nashville is, which state. Uh, we have Joaquin from Rosario, Argentina. All right. Well, we have <laughs> we almost have uh, 3,000 people in the in the chat, so that's uh, super good. Welcome, everybody. Um, it's been now a week since I've been uh, been back after that crazy, crazy repatriation from Peru. So I thought let's uh, have a live chat. And yesterday I I put the announcement and I literally got hundreds of questions. So thank you very much for that. Uh, there were a lot of really cool questions there. Uh, so I'm going to try to answer as many questions as I can, both the ones that were asked yesterday and whatever pops up in uh, in the live chat. Um, so I, I was thinking to try to make this live chat a little bit organized. So I kind of rearranged the questions um, in certain topics. So let's see how organized I can make this live chat. At least that's the idea. In any case, if your question is not being answered in this live chat, um, then please check itchyboots.com slash FAQ, frequently asked questions, because a lot of the questions that I saw I've already answered there, and obviously also in the previous live chats. Um, so I'll just start with a few questions that were asked yesterday and then in the meantime I keep an eye on the live chat and see what all of you are saying. Uh, please note that I put a delay so if you write me something you have to wait, what did I put it now, three or four minutes before you can write again. So <laughs> otherwise it's going so fast I cannot read uh, anything anymore. So that's the, that's the plan. So. First, I had two similar questions, one from Hector Farias and one from Brian Eaton. Uh, Hector was asking, is from Argentina, and he said, I would like to know if you and your family are in good health. And Brian also said, um, the only question I have to ask my favorite world explorer is, how is your family doing? Everybody's staying healthy. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Brian and Hector. Yes, I'm absolutely fine, I'm feeling good, and my family is also very good uh, they're all healthy nobody is sick um, I hope all of you and all of your families are of course in very good health as well um, it's just 
crazy, crazy times all over the world. Um, so I really hope that all of you and all your families are in good health and are staying safe. Um, then, of course, I got loads of questions about Dano. Um, so I put a few here together. Um, yeah, I'll just answer the questions on the no and then I'll go back to the live chat and give some more shout outs to people that are joining in. Um, so most of the questions about the no, they're all kind of saying the same thing. And Kevin Adams asked me if I managed to get the no's temporary import suspended or extended. And Part Singh asked me how much time you have e extended the temporary import permits. Uh, and Percy Patel also asked me what will happen to the no, will she join you in the Netherlands? So update on the no. I left her in Lima, uh, as you could see in, I can't remember which episode, but one of the most recent videos, I had to leave her behind there. And then I put in all the paperwork to get the temporary import permit suspended. I asked for six months uh, just to be uh, kind of on the safe side. Um, and I haven't heard back. And I already submitted that a week and a half ago, no, no more, two weeks ago, I think, or even more. And this week I sent another email. Oh, by the way, oh, Chuck, VT, thank you very much, Chuck. Um, so back to the story, I shouldn't get too distracted. What was I saying now? Um, oh yeah, so then I asked again, what's going on? Uh, can I get it extended? And no reply, this is, probably also due because the customs are I actually don't know if they're even working or if they are all stay at home as you could see Peru is on a hectic hectic lockdown and uh, they did respond to my email and they forwarded it to somebody else and then it was quiet so I don't know there are rumors that it's automatically extended for some period like a month I think um, but that's not confirmed so at this moment, uh, yeah, it's still the case that Dano can stay in Peru until the 13th of May, which is not so far away anymore. Um, so yeah, I really hope that I can get the permit suspended because then she can stay for much longer. And yeah, that's obviously uh, the hope that everything will calm down and that I can continue my travel. and that I can just fly back to Peru and continue because getting the no out of Peru is obviously, yeah, a huge hassle and also a very expensive hassle. So if it's possible, I want to keep it there. But unfortunately, I have zero, zero news on what is going to happen. So yeah, we just have to hope that it will work out, I guess. Um, all right, let me do some shout outs to some people. Uh, we have Mike from Montana, um, and then Adrian from Espana. Uh, oh, it's so cool to see all these people. UK, Simon, present. Yeah, Hussein Gulum says Corona will be at least until the next year. I hope not, of course. Um, but yeah, let's see what, uh, what's going to happen. Uh, oh, we got uh, somebody from Brazil. It's Moto O'Clock. Somebody from Greece, Norway, Buenos Aires. Oh, wow, there's more than 5,000 people now. <laughs> okay, let's get back to the questions. Otherwise, I'm just uh, saying 5,000 names. That's maybe not, uh, let's get a bit boring. Uh, okay, so back to the next kind of topic. There were a couple of people asking me questions about how it is like to be back in the Netherlands now. Um, that's what Andrew Storm said, what it's like to be back in the Netherlands. Uh, a little bit weird, of course, because it came so sudden. And I was really, my mindset was just on traveling. And I had a really good flow going, things were going well. I had an amazing time in Bolivia and I was looking forward to exploring a lot of Peru. I had big plans um, and then suddenly, yeah, the entire world uh, stopped, of course. And um, yeah, all of our lives, I think, are affected at the moment, uh, yeah, including uh, my trip. So yeah, it's just very weird to be back in the Netherlands. But at the same time, I am really glad that I got to get get out of Peru. It was just not the right time to be there as a foreigner. 
Um, so I'm glad that I made it and yeah, now all we have to do is uh, yeah, wait it out here in the Netherlands. Um, Ajit Singh said, uh, hope you're doing good, glad you reached the Netherlands safe. Um, you said, do you have to stay at quarantine for 14 or so days? Uh, officially not. So because I didn't come from a risk, what they call risk area in the Netherlands, such as Italy, Spain, the United States, uh, France, I think those are considered uh, risk areas when it comes to coronavirus. And because I didn't come from there, I didn't, I wasn't forced to go into 14 days quarantine. Um, but okay, that doesn't matter. That doesn't mean that um, I'm now seeing a lot of people suddenly. I just have to follow the same rules as everybody else here in the Netherlands, which is keeping one and a half meter distance, and yeah, don't uh, walk around in groups of people. And well, pretty much the standard rules apply um, to me as, as to everybody else. Um, so yeah, Marion Finnegan said, "What is the lockdown situation like in the Netherlands at the moment?" Um, here in the Netherlands, it's very, very different from Peru. Um, nobody's wearing face masks. Uh, the government, uh, for a very long time, they said it's not necessary and they actually don't want people to wear them because in the Netherlands, there's a shortage. So they want all the face masks to go to the hospitals and the people working in caring. And so nobody is uh, wearing face masks. Um, and it's relatively, we have quite some freedom here. Uh, there's a lot of shops are open. Um, people are allowed to, yeah, go outside for a walk or something like that. So it's uh, definitely not as strict as in Peru. Um, expect in UK biker says, since you're nomadic by nature, how are you coping with quarantine? Um, once you cover everywhere you want to travel, what's the next thing in your life? Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I, I think I'm coping with quarantine the same way as everybody else. It's not so easy. Um, but yeah, I think it does help. I think that the entire world is in the same, literally in the same boat. So yeah, I, I guess that helps a little bit that we all have to deal with the same uh, situation. Um, all right, let me give <laughs> oh we got a marriage proposal from chris h no thank you very much <laughs> uh thank you john felpula and thank you f muchira one and sean kiog hope this helps yes it definitely helps thank you very much um <laughs> vespa travels uh, says in the live chat, hey Norley, love your videos, don't stop while home. Well, yeah, that's 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 a thing. Um, I will talk about that uh, in a minute, about yeah, making videos while I'm here. And what's the deal with that? Um, oh, Jonathan Lee says, hey Norley, would you ever consider riding the road of bones? That's in uh, Russia for the people that know that. Yeah, I would love it, love it. That's some, yeah, something I really like to do. But hey, first things first, let me get back to my super organized live stream uh, plan. Because um, yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about what I'm going to do while I'm here in the Netherlands. Um, some people were asking questions about it. Uh, Joe Friday said, I was hoping to see a video from your hometown. Um, I don't know exactly what you mean with hometown, but anyway, yeah, making videos in the Netherlands while I'm here, I, I hope to do it and I think I will um, because the way I see it, there's what probably or what might happen is that at some point um, things calm down in the Netherlands and I'm free to ride around here in the Netherlands and make some videos, but I cannot go back to Peru yet um, because I have a feeling that it's going to take longer before you know, the, the restrictions are lifted there and before there's flights again and that sort of thing. Um, so when that happens, then for sure, I would love to make use of this opportunity to show you more of my home country and to make really cool videos here in the Netherlands. So I am planning to do that, but at this moment, it's just not the time yet. Um, you are allowed to ride a motorcycle in the Netherlands, so that it is allowed, but 
to make content about it, I noticed in my latest series uh, of videos that, yeah, how to, <laughs> how to say this, it's, it's a bit tricky. Like for example, here in the Netherlands, nobody is wearing uh, face masks. And that is something that is kind of government policy. Um, but if I make videos here, I have a feeling that a lot of people will kind of hold me personally responsible for the fact that nobody is wearing mouth masks or that I am not wear wearing a mouth mask, for example. Um, and I, I, I just don't want to make videos and then just be flooded with, uh, with hate and comments on how people here are dealing with the corona crisis. It's just, <laughs> it just kind of takes out all the fun. Uh, which I try to, yeah, I always love making content that makes people happy and that you can enjoy. And I don't feel like sparking a whole discussion on how countries are dealing with this whole situation. Um, yeah, I hope you can kind of understand that. So at this moment, I don't really want to go out and create content about it. Um, I am thinking of maybe using some older footage and making some videos with that, but um, yeah, I'll just have to see. <laughs> yeah, okay, I am I am multitasking here. At the same time, I'm reading all the messages which are which are coming in. Oh, somebody, Nick Naam de Plume says, klinkt verstandig, which means sounds reasonable. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, I um, hope uh, all of you can kind of understand um, where I'm coming from. Um, being on YouTube in this time is kind of tricky, you know, it's it's all a little bit sensitive uh, what's going on. So, yeah. <laughs> Vest says, dude, more people watch this than the president's <laughs> briefings. <laughs> oh, I think that's funny. Anyway. Um, yeah, so back to some earlier questions. Uh, sorry, I cannot pronounce your name. It's Rikikesh Andurlekar said, would it be possible for you to do a few behind the scenes videos with footage that you did not include in your final edits? Um, and inch by inch said something like that as well. He said, do you have any out clips that will make us smile from past adventures, please? So yeah, uh, obviously I do have a lot of content which I deliberately did not put in my videos yet. Um, stuff like uh, me falling off the bike and that sort of thing. Um, and I left it out because uh, I noticed that a lot of uh, yeah a lot of you are pretty worried about me a lot of the time, and I kind of felt like I didn't want to worry any more people. And yeah. I didn't want to be flooded, like have my email box flooded with people telling me that I have to write more careful or yeah, that kind of stuff. And I was planning to make an entire compilation video of all the things that went wrong uh, at the end when I, when I was in Alaska. Um, so I kept all this footage apart. Um, so yeah, I am still considering bringing that out now uh, with the risk that yeah, I will still be flooded with uh, a lot of messages of worried people and yeah, I don't know, probably a lot of uh, advice on how I should ride my motorcycle. <laughs> Fireball36 says, do a best of and a worst of video, please. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe that's a, that's a good, good idea. Yeah, I, I, will, I will make it. I will make a worst of if you promise not to, yeah, if you promise not to be too hard on me. <laughs> Then, uh, then I can do that. Yeah, like a bloopers aflevering. Yeah, okay. Yeah, if you're all up for uh, bloopers and uh, the things that that went wrong, then uh, yeah, maybe I can uh, make a video like that. Um, my my plan is to make to bring out one video per week, and it doesn't sound like a lot, but it is a lot if you don't really yeah. Uh, if I'm kind of stuck in here all the time. <laughs> then it's going to be a big of a challenge anyway to do that. Um, but this is not the only thing that I'm doing. Uh, I am super busy with two projects. Um, and one, no, I'm going to say a little bit. So I am busy with two projects. I'm not the person to really do nothing. I'm not very good at doing nothing. So as soon as I arrived here, I already started working again on some other things, uh, which I normally don't have a lot of time. 
And the first one, the first project, I'm going to announce it now. This is something that I did put this in motion already some time ago. So I already started with this well before anyone had ever heard of COVID-19. So please, this, this is, has nothing to do with the current crisis. I was already working on this. Look, I made these Itchy Boots, boots Buffs. Cannot, can hardly say it. Itchy Boots Buffs. Uh, because I always wear them, of course. And I had these ones made. And these ones have, if you recognize it, the same print as I have on Dano's uh, tank. So I am super happy with them. I think they turn out really, really cool. Um, and I am now working on getting the right packaging material. And I still need like a label printer or something to print the addresses. And well, anyway, I am in the final phases of preparing anything. Uh, but I hope to uh, launch the sale of these very soon. And the same as with the calendar um, thing, it's going to be a limited edition. So it's kind of a one-time thing. Uh, and I will announce it on via the newsletter for my website. So if you're interested in it, then please subscribe to my website on itchyboots.com. And then in the newsletter, which comes out bi-weekly, or maybe I'll make a quicker announcement for this one, um, you will see uh, when it's for sale. So yeah, I hope you like it. Now I'm gonna see the responses. Does anybody like it? Please say yes. Oh, cool, yay, yay. Celestino Pereira says they're cool. Oh yeah, Gerard Wasting says, how much will they be? Yeah, maybe I shouldn't say it yet. <laughs> I haven't calculated it exactly, um, but I did on the calendar series, uh, I made one price, including shipping worldwide. And now I cannot do that because, uh, because of the Corona crisis, shipping outside of Europe is now a lot more expensive for me. Um, so I will have to yeah, make one price and then add on the shipping costs, which unfortunately uh, in some areas are really, really expensive. So, um, yeah, but yeah, I can't, just, I cannot do nothing about that. Um, but anyway, I, I will, I should not say anything yet because I haven't <laughs> decided yet how much they, uh, they're going to be. Um, but anyway, by purchasing them, uh, you are supporting the trip, uh, as soon as I can start again, of course. So, um, that's project number one um, see if there's more, more people saying that they like it. Oh yes. Yay. Oh, that's so awesome. Oh, it's really cool to hear that you like it. Yeah, David Williams Williams says, love it. Hell, McCain. Okay. Oh, awesome. Cool. Well, let's see how fast they, they go. If it's like really, really fast, then maybe I can make um, a second badge or something. Um, awesome. And then project number two, which is also really exciting. Um, but the thing is, well, now I'm going to be super mysterious because I actually don't want to say yet what project number two is, but the only thing I want to say about it, that it's very big. And uh, it's something that uh, I was I wanted to do for a long time, but I don't have the time or the, um, how you say that, resources to do that on the road. So now that I thought, okay, I am most likely here in the Netherlands for several months. I'll come later back on that. Um, so now I actually have the time and the resources to set up this second project. Um, and yeah, I don't want to say yet what it is because I want to keep it a little bit as a surprise as well. Um, but just so that you know, I am working on something really, really cool. And yeah, I'm not sitting here doing nothing. And uh, yeah, I think some really cool things are going to happen. Um, uh, high profile. Oh, t-shirts, please. Brian Green. Yeah, t-shirts are also a thing that, uh, yeah, um, is maybe something that I can set up while I'm here and I have the time. Um, but yeah, I thought first finish this project and my second one and then, uh, yeah, maybe think about something else to keep, uh, keep myself busy. Um, I wanted to say something. What did I want to say now? Uh, no, I, I forgot. It must not have been important. Um, all right, I go back to the next uh, topic on my on my list. Um, 
Sorry, I get distracted. 1919 Social says, watch for breakfast. Yeah. Do you guys still like uh, me showing watch for breakfast? Please let me know um, if you still like that. And if not, then uh, yeah, I might stop with that at some point. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, let's talk a little bit about yeah, what's going to happen next. Um, Brad Kigan asked me, well, he's, he wrote me quite a long uh, story. Um, but he said, have you heard from the good folks back in Peru who helped you through the last week there? Yes, and they are all good. Nobody uh, got sick or anything like that. They are all fine, so I'm really happy with that. Um, and your second question was, and should travel restrictions be lifted at a point when you would have... I don't understand your question. I think what you mean is whether I am going to continue the trip from Peru. Of course, that is the plan. Um, I have some bad news because uh, what I understood now is that Peru announced that until the 22nd of April, Peru is allowing repatriation flights for tourists to go back to their countries. And then after the 22nd of April, they're going to close down the entire airspace for 90 days. That is three months, no airplanes in and out of Peru. So yeah, that is pretty insane. Um, maybe some people now wonder like uh didn't like don't you think now you should have stayed in peru but no still the answer would be no i i wouldn't want to be in a country which i could not leave for three months um what i said before if something would happen here in the netherlands with my family or friends or whatever i couldn't even come back you know so i'm glad that i made it out of peru before another three months of no planes in and out um so yeah of course, I don't know if they're really going to do this, but if they do, well, that means that I am here in the Netherlands for quite some time. Oh, <laughs> little break. I see a lot of people are saying good things about the breakfast. Okay. <laughs> cool. Oh, thank you, Xerox. You're watching with the whole family. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, and an old colleague. Oh, that's so awesome. Thanks. Um, I was saying something. Um, oh yeah. So of course I want to go back back to Peru and finish the trip. But it all depends on yeah how it will develop, how things will go with the no and the temporary import permit, how things will develop in the United States. Of course, are they going to allow people to enter in the next few months or is everything going to be like, are all the borders still going to be locked? I mean, there are so many questions and nobody knows the answer at the moment. Um, so yeah, I'll just wait here and, and see what happens. What I'm trying to avoid is trying to start up too soon. So try to start up the journey too soon when there are still restrictions in countries on my planned route. Because obviously what I don't want is uh, be able to ride out of Peru into Ecuador and for example, then get stuck in Colombia again and have this same circus all over again. Um, so I think it is important to try to be patient and only start again when it really looks like, you know, traveling is normal again and possible and safe and, and all of that. Um, yeah, because otherwise I might get stuck again and that kind of takes the fun out of the whole thing. So uh, I think there's not much point in um, trying to do that. Yeah, Wayne Sutton says, just wait until the end of the year. Yeah, but that's really, really, that's a long time. <laughs> you know? But yeah, I hope, hope not that it will take that long. But um, yeah, it's very difficult to, uh, to, to know that now. Oh, Ron TV is also pro breakfast. <laughs> oh, and Welsh Hobbit also says keep the food coming. Okay, cool. I'll try to uh, to do that. Well, maybe not in the Netherlands. I don't know how interesting that is, but yeah, yeah. Marie Pierre Boner says Boner says we're missing your let's go. Me too. Me too. Oh, it's so weird to yeah, not doing what i what i'm doing all the time and yeah it's very weird oh but i do have some really really cool news okay somebody asked a question about it um where is it anyway it doesn't matter um because i have some really cool news because today what happened is that today 
I got a, how do you say that? Lane motor, which is Dutch for borrowed motorcycle, kind of, from Roy Enfield Benelux. So these are the same people uh, who have Basanti, so who, with whom I made the trade between Basanti and the No. And um, obviously they know that I'm now here in the Netherlands and I don't have a car, I don't have a motorcycle here. Uh, Basanti is obviously not allowed to be on the road because of the Indian license plate. So I don't have any mode of transport here. Um, so they said, you know what, uh, you can borrow this, um, this, this motorcycle. So it's Himalayan as well. So I am super stoked um, that at least uh, I have a motorcycle here. Um, so yeah, when you know, things calm down a little bit, at least in the Netherlands, I can uh, ride around here a little bit, make some videos. And then at the same time, uh, Revit also helped me a lot. Uh, because I had to leave most of my gear in Peru. I just couldn't bring everything with me. So I didn't have uh, like proper riding gear. And um, so they, they donated all this uh, riding gear so I can uh, ride here in the Netherlands uh, for as long as I have to stay here. So yeah, today for me, <laughs> it's just an awesome day. It kind of felt like uh, Christmas. So I'm super happy with this support. And um, yeah, it means that uh, I can should make some videos here uh, in the Netherlands for you. So I think that's super awesome. Uh, Jack Breeding says, Revit rocks. Yeah, I agree, I agree. They're super awesome. Um, oh, yeah. DNSO says, what name will you give the new bike? It's a good question. I mean, it's not really mine to name it maybe because it's not mine, but um, yeah, maybe you guys can think of a name, so at least we can name it while I have it here. And they even made it, yeah, I can't show you now, because I can't hardly take this laptop out now. But uh, I will already uh, tell you this, that they, especially for me, they put uh, Itchy Boots uh, logo on the tank. So it's really kind of like a sister of the No now. It's, it looks amazing. Um, Sven E. Anderson says, where is the bike now? Do you mean the one that I picked up today? It's outside here, so I have it with me. Uh, <laughs> oh, there's suggestions for the name. Yeah, no, I don't want anything with <laughs> trip on two wheels. Name the new bike Corona Buster. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think we should go with for anything with Corona. Uh, I don't think so. Oh, Lima, that's a cool name, actually from Steven Schofield, Lima. I kind of like that actually. Yeah, cool. <laughs> oh, you guys are hysterical. I'm reading so many funny comments. All right, uh, let me go to some uh, questions that were asked before. Um, okay, so I had a few questions which uh, were about my gear and uh, about stuff that I use. Um, I don't know how to pronounce this. Filed Rider is asking, Hey Nerli, how did your soft bags perform in rain and or dusty conditions so far? Pollution or water inside? Um, really good. Uh, the soft bags are better than, in my experience, than hard luggage. Because hard luggage will it will get damp inside they are not really really waterproof and the soft bags are um, dusty yeah the outside of the bags get get quite filthy uh, of course but the inside is just remains clean and extremely dry like proper dry dry so I am super happy with that um, you also asked me do you have to readjust your chain oiler often during an off-road day I don't know what you mean with adjust my chain oiler because I don't have to adjust it. I just use it to ch to chain my uh, oil my chain. Um, I am very happy with it. Um, I was just oh this is maybe um, funny. To, no, it's not really funny, but maybe I should say it that I was planning after Lampa. My plan was to ride to Arequipa in Peru, which is a bigger bigger city. And I was planning to do a big maintenance um, because the no hit 20,000 kilometers and I wanted to change the chain. Um, so with the chain oiler that I used, 
the chain lasted almost twice as long as with Basanti. <laughs> so that is just, yeah, a lot better. And um, it, it's not completely finished yet. I could get out maybe, yeah, maybe two or 3,000 kilometers more until like 22, 23,000 kilometers. Uh, but yeah, as always, I never, I don't like to wait until the very, very end. Uh, and I like to do as much maintenance in the same time as I can, because I don't want to, you know, go to a mechanic every week or something like that. And, uh, well, I, I am not going to change the chain myself, or the chain in the sprockets. Uh, I rather have somebody do that who actually knows what he's doing. <laughs> um, so basically, it also means that if I can go back to Dano, the first thing I have to do is arrange this whole maintenance thing. So unfortunately, it's not like plug and play and uh, off we go again. I first have to do the whole uh, service, arrange the whole service. Um, but anyway, so when it comes to the chain, uh, that chain oiler is absolutely brilliant. And yeah, it just yeah doubled the lifetime of my chain. Um, before it was really low, that was my own fault because I didn't do enough maintenance or not good enough. Um, but um, yeah, now it's going a lot better, a lot better. Um, okay, uh, back to the questions. Um, oh yeah, so Mark Sturgeon also asked about the um, uh, luggage. He says, what are the pros and cons you found on a Moscow Moto Reckless 80 versus traditional aluminum panniers? Um, yeah, what I said before, one of the big advantages is that your stuff remains really, really dry in the in the bags and not in the panniers. Um, they are lighter than the panniers. And I would just say, I think al aluminum panniers are great if you do touring like in Europe or touring on tarmac. I think they're great. But if you like to do a lot of off-roading and more like adventure style riding, then I would never go back to aluminum panniers. Like for me, it's soft luggage all the way when as soon as you go off-road um, so that's and because that's what I do like for the majority of the time uh, I am riding off-road or well dirt roads whatever um, more difficult terrain so for me I would never change back to aluminium uh, aluminium uh, aluminium panniers it's a hard word um, Francisco Veronesi Francisco Dovi says, what is your equip of filmation? I think you mean my camera equipment. I use GoPros. Um, a lot of this is you can find about on itchiboot.com. I talk a lot about what, what I use. Uh, oh, Chaitanya Akuri says, which tires have done well for you so far? Um, what am I using now? I'm now again on the Pirelli MT60s. I've used those the most. And then in Patagonia, I cannot even remember anymore. What did I have? The Sahara, what did I have? Anybody remember? <laughs> what did I have now? I cannot even remember it. Please, somebody help me out. What did I, I changed it for, it was only the rear tire. Something like Sahara something. I cannot even remember the the brand. Nobody helping me out? No. Metzler. Yes. Go on on right. Thank you very much. Yes, that was the, those were the Metzlers. Yeah, I also really like those. Um, I think they were they were even a little bit better than the than the Pirelli MT sixties. Um, but yeah, I don't know. People are always talking about tires, and yeah, for me. I don't really want to experiment all the time with it. I'd rather than use a tire of which I know it works fine for me. Like, so if I can, I will always choose the Pirelli MT60s because I know them well. They're good for me. Now I know that I also like the Metzler. Um, so I would only change to another brand if there's nothing else available and I don't have a choice or whatever, then, then, I, would, then I would. But I wouldn't try it for fun or be like, oh, maybe this one is better. Because then if it's not, then you're stuck with this tire and then you have to look for a tire again. And for me, that's just way too much hassle on the road. So I try to avoid that uh, if I can. Um, <laughs> oh, Milton Cabrera said, how many flat tire did you had? Okay, so now I'm going to tell you a little secret. 
because I had uh, in this se second season I'm in, I made one video where I had a flat tire which was on the first day first day leaving from Buenos Aires I had a flat tire but that was not the only time I had a flat tire on this trip I wasn't so lucky this time um, but after that first video I was thought like okay yeah let's share it that's cool and then oh my I just got hundreds and hundreds of comments about tubeless tires and all of that and then I was like after that, I was like, you know what, I am not going to film it anymore because it will only spark that whole tube, tubeless tire discussion. And yeah, I am not going to kind of defend myself every time. Um, somebody actually asked me a question about the, oh yeah, Ines Schneider um, said, why do you prefer tube tires and not the tubeless and use this sticky repair set? And then in brackets, I don't know the real name for the tubeless repair kit. Um, yeah, so, so that's the thing. It's not that I prefer to have tube tires. It's just that's how my bike comes, you know. So if if I would go want to go tubeless, then either you have to spend a lot of money on uh, different rims or you have to use, I mean, you can use some sort of paste or something like that. For me, that's just way too much hassle. And, you know, Yes, if you have a nail, then yes, with the, the sticky thing, you can fix uh, a tubeless tire much faster. But I think tubeless tires, you can also have flat tires or you can damage the rim or whatever. And then you also have to stop and put in a tube. You know, it's not like suddenly all your problems are gone <laughs> when you have tubeless tires. So for me, I'm just like, look, this is the way my bike is. And I don't feel the need to make all these adjustments. Um, it's only when you have a nail that it's a lot faster, but there's plenty of other problems with tubeless uh, tires. And then you also have to put in a tube. So then it doesn't really matter anymore. So yeah, but yeah, it does. It, it is the reason why I was like, oh, I'm not going to film this because I really don't want this whole discussion again. <laughs> um, I hope you can understand that a little bit. Um, yeah, because and maybe I should explain this a little bit more, but it's because it's not only like the comments on YouTube, but I also get like flooded with hundreds of people emailing me, explaining me how to change a tire and so that sort of thing. And it's probably all meant really well, but yeah, it's just so much work for me to, to go through all this stuff that I was like, okay, never mind, I'm not going to uh, record it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Eva Corsa says, still, mishaps are part of the journey. Yes, you are correct. But that's why I thought, you know, I keep some things I do record. And I thought, you know, I keep the footage and then I release it and another time. Um, and that's kind of the idea now that stuff that I don't want to show immediately that I will leave it for another for another part. Um, but yeah, I would want to share everything, but I just don't always want to, I don't know, deal with all the consequences or something I don't know uh, uh, oh tiger eight says why do you not show the time on your iPhone anymore yeah I don't know I always got a lot of comments of people saying why was I showing the time that at some point I was like okay I won't show it anymore and well and yeah I don't know. Maybe I should do it again. <laughs> okay, there's some more requests of uh, releasing bloopers. Yeah, maybe that's going to be a very popular, <laughs> popular video of all the times that I completely messed up. Um, all right, let's go back to a few more questions. Um, Okay, John Weiss asked me, Norley, you don't seem to stand up as often while riding the no as you did with Basanti. Why? Um, well, I don't think I stand up more or less. Um, I think it's just that I don't record it so much anymore. Um, you have to think that mostly a video, if I release a video of 15 minutes, it has maybe eight minutes of riding footage and the rest is me going blah 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 
Um, so that's like eight minutes of an entire day. So maybe eight minutes represents eight hours of riding. Um, and I think in the beginning with Basanti, I just recorded it more when I was standing just because, yeah, people are always saying, you should stand on the pegs. <laughs> and I know I, I do that if it's necessary, uh, but for me, it's mostly not necessary. Um, plus I like to, um, I only stand on the packs when I really have to. I don't do it just for fun because you, you cannot do this for eight hours at a time. So my mantra, which I learned in Oman from Peter is always stand when you have to sit when you can. Like for example, when I was riding in Bolivia uh, and the, um, the Altiplano, that was like pretty tough riding. And I am glad that I practiced so much just doing that sitting because otherwise I would have to stand the entire day. And that's just exhausting, especially at that altitude. You need to be able to sit down. So for me, I practice to be a very good rider when I sit down. And only if it's like super, super gnarly, then I can stand up to make it easier for myself. But that's kind of, yeah, my strategy to just become an as good as rider when I sit down as when I stand up. Oh, thanks, Graham. Tweet. <laughs> that's that's very nice to hear. Um, Jesse de Groot says, "Do you like to make a room house room tour video?" Uh, actually, um, I how to say this in a good way. I have to be a little bit careful with not disclosing where I am, especially because now I will be in one place for several months and. Um, yeah, the last time that I was in the Netherlands, I was not so careful and people figured out where I was staying and there were like people coming to the apartment where I was staying. And now that I was in Lima in the hotel, people were calling to my hotel room, um, probably with the best intentions, but it kind of freaked me out a little bit. Uh, and people writing to the hotel where I was staying and uh, calling and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, I'm sure it's all with the best intentions, but um, yeah, it makes me slightly uncomfortable. <laughs> um, so yeah, I am trying to not disclose where I am. I hope you understand that. Um, yeah. Uh, Maga Lupu says in Bolivia for a girl, it's safe. Yeah, I, I didn't feel any more unsafe there uh, as in other uh, places. Yeah, George W. Sam, yikes, that sounds creepy. Yeah, it, it does it's, it's, It does feel a little bit creepy, even though it's probably just people with the best intentions wanting to offer help or something like that. And I do realize that, but yeah, at the same time, um, I of course don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a good idea, Paul King. You could get a fake beard. <laughs> Could always try that, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, Paul Lonergan, what on earth did your host family in Peru think? Yeah, they, they. well, at some point I, I, I told them that about the YouTube channel, of course, and then they realized how many people were watching and they were like, oh, oh, wow, wow. Um, yeah, they were, Juan in the hostel, he was just, absolute legend really this guy um somebody asked me a question like who are the people that made the um, made the best impression on you or something like that so a question and yeah juan definitely ranks amongst the people that uh, i will never forget and because what he did was quite special because when i was that so this for the people who missed that juan was the hostel owner where i stayed in lampa for two weeks and he and his wife were also getting a lot of, uh, yeah, you say that bad reactions from the people in town that were um, kind of saying like, why are you hosting this woman? And uh, you have a tourist. And so his life was made quite a bit more difficult with me staying there. And yet he always remained on my side. He always stood up for me, helped me out wherever he could. And yeah, that was just, yeah, super, super great. And um, I'm still in touch with him. And what I said before, um, he and his wife both didn't get sick or anything like that. And uh, 
yeah, I hope things are calming down for him now as well there. Um, but yeah, absolute hero. Um, oh yeah. Um, oh. Andrian Balanescu, what type of oil gas are you using? I don't know. <laughs> Just whatever is available. Um, often in places where, for example, if I know that there are not a lot of petrol stations, um, for example, in Patagonia, I always try to go for like the higher grade ones, um, which, well, as far as I know, give you a little bit more mileage. Um, so yeah, I try to get then a little bit slightly better quality, but other than that, just whatever is available and try to avoid black market stuff, uh, unless I don't have any other option. Um, yeah, Antonio Cruz. And how about Ramiro, a legend too? Yeah, absolutely. You know, what is kind of the, what I found the sad thing is that when I released the videos where Ramiro drove me to Lima, uh, by the way, I did I did pay him for that, so it, it wasn't that you know it wasn't like um, how you say that I, I paid him for it, but still, uh, when he drove me to Lima and the videos from that trip released, then I thought it was amazing. Like most of the comment section, all of you were like, "Oh wow, Ramiro, awesome! Uh, what an awesome guy! Thank you very much." So he was kind of like he was really well received in my videos, but then later what happened is that one of those two videos got picked up by local media. So, but this was slightly bigger local media uh, of the province and they shared it on Facebook. And there the responses were extremely, were the opposite. Um, because obviously in Peru, everybody had to go on a lockdown. I mean, there were thousands and thousands of tourists stranded all over the place but also locals. So there were a lot of people that were that were not able to get home because the lockdown was so quickly. So nobody had time to, to travel or to get home or get to work or whatever they had to be. So the locals, when they saw that I was being repatriated, um, a lot of them got very upset that tourists were allowed to travel and all of that. And yeah, I, I can understand where this sentiment comes from. But at the same time, I mean, we were not doing anything illegal and we had the permissions and this was all a cooperation between lots of embassies and the local authorities. Uh, it was not only me, but literally thousands of tourists have been uh, repatriated and all were transported to Lima. Uh, and it was all like under agreement. But yeah, sometimes on social media, things can just completely blow up. And the point I was trying to make is that Ramiro got a lot of hate on that uh, Facebook group by locals that he was bringing me there and it was irresponsible and all of that so I felt really bad about that um, because he saw that too and I was like this is so unfair for him um, but yeah that just uh, yeah nothing uh, nothing we can do about it sometimes things just completely blow up on social media and uh, yeah yeah so that that was that okay now I go read some comments again um. Yeah, <laughs> Torm KG says, yeah, we're not comfortable with you being here, but don't you dare leave. Yeah, that, that's exactly the thing, you know. Uh, it was kind of, yeah, yeah, you phrased that very well, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Anders Lulea says, what's the record low on gas you have been? Hmm, good one. Um, I think I had one time I had half a liter left. And I think that's even that half a liter is not even, I think, available. So that was like <laughs> pretty empty, empty. Yeah, but then I still had the two, the extra cans. I do have to say that. So I never felt super, super scared. Uh, Oh, thank you, Soulstar. <laughs> okay, let me go back to a few more questions that I prepared here. Uh, let me see that people ask me. Uh, let me see. Oh. oh, why is this not working? Ah. 
Oh yeah, Steve M said, what happened to the first drone? I still have that one. You mean the first one from season one? Uh, that was the, the Spark. Uh, I still have that, but I wanted to upgrade to a better drone. So now I use that uh, Mavic Air. Is it? Yeah, it's the Mavic Air, yeah. Um, almost crashed it again. Oh my, these drones are... Pfft. It's a very expensive hobby, I would say, and it's very easily, it goes it goes all wrong and you lose it or you crash it and yeah. Uh, but I keep on trying to get it better because the footage yeah, that, that comes out of the drone is just really, really awesome. Um, here in the Netherlands, there are so many restrictions. You're practically not allowed to fly it anywhere. I think there's two locations in the entire country where you're allowed to fly it. So here in the Netherlands is not really um, yeah, an option. Uh, Andrew GMP says why use two set navs um, I like to do that because sometimes the one navigation is better than the other or the one knows a smaller road or another road they're not always exactly the same because I use different uh, maps um, and yeah for me it's very important if, if I would only have one and I would break, then I have absolutely no idea <laughs> where I am, you know. I don't travel with... Oh, I have the map, but that's like such a... Um, how do you say that? General map that it doesn't really show all the roads. Other than that, I have no road maps or no way of knowing where I am. So for me, that's super important. So I like to have always two ways of uh, kind of knowing where I am. <laughs> Nicolas Cotis... Ask me if you're going to the, if I'm going to the gym. No, I'm not. Well, now the gyms are closed everywhere. I started to go to the gym in La Paz in Bolivia. And it's something that I, I always used to hate gyms. Um, but there I got really got into it and I actually quite liked it. Um, so yeah, I would want to try to go to the gym again here in the Netherlands. But at this moment, of course, the gyms are all closed. Oh, thank you, Celestion Silva, for your support. Uh, drone bloopers, yeah, the, the, from the Curious Nerd. Yeah, so I have... Wait, do I have one? No, I think oh, I only have one drone blooper where I crashed... The, this is insane, but I crashed the drone against a mountain and somehow I managed to retrieve it and a few things were slightly broken and they're still slightly broken <laughs> but it's still working it's still functional and i do have the footage of that so yeah uh, i will i'll put that in the in the blooper video yeah <laughs> oh mark richardson says why did every border crossing always ask if you were traveling alone uh, that's not only the border crossings that everybody asked me this and um, i try to put it regularly in the in the videos so that people realize that it's a question that i get asked all the time um, usually a lot of people say that they find it creepy when people ask me this um, because they think that the question is being asked because somebody i don't know means me any harm uh, but i can promise you that is just not the case it's just a question that everybody asks because it's just very uncommon for women to travel alone on a motorcycle um, most women that travel on motorcycles they are at least with a partner or in a group and even yeah most motorcycle travelers travel in groups and the ones that do it alone are usually guys so it's just in my opinion it's a pretty uh, innocent question and it usually comes after where are you from and are you alone those are the questions that every <laughs> single person asks me all the time so yeah um. hello from Greece hi oh thank you WW IIDDSS Mm -hmm. Oh wow, yeah. Matteo Finocci, you were also in Peru with your motorcycle, fled to Chile and returned to Italy end of March. Well, I'm glad you managed to get back home. I hope it's okay for you in Italy at the moment. Uh, oh, here. Edelin Passeando says, I always get the alone question, I'm a man. Okay, so see, even... For guys, uh, it's a very common question. It's being asked. 
Uh, oh, hi, Pierre Fouguet from South Africa. Uh, okay, let me go back to um, a few other questions. Um, oh, yeah, Edeline Paciando asked me, which were so far your favorite animals you encountered along your trips? Regards from an Argentinian in the Netherlands. I think this is such a cool question because I'm not saying this because you're from Argentina, but Argentina was by far my favorite country when it comes to wild animals. I have never been riding through a country where I saw so much wildlife and so many different uh, wildlife. Um, Argentina really, really stood out when it comes to that, much more than Chile and yeah, anywhere in Asia, to be honest. Um, oh, thank you, Kevin Mendes. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Uh, <clears throat> what was I saying? Um, oh yeah, but my favorite one, definitely the Maras, um, or you also call them Patagonian hares. Uh, those little ones that were running super fast uh, in front of me. Really, really like those. They were just so extremely cute. Um, so yeah, I think those were my favorites. Um, and I also quite like seeing the foxes. Um, even though they are, yeah, in a lot of areas, they are a little bit of a plague and yeah, they're being shot. But for me, seeing a fox, um, yeah, it's quite special. And I, I still liked it, just seeing them. Um. <laughs> Tracy, Tracy, Tracy says, we love the dogs in Bolivia, super chill compared to the other places. Yeah, yeah, in Bolivia, the dogs were relatively mellow. Um, not as bad as that one in Argentina. That's the first time I got bit. Uh, I really did not like that at all. <laughs> and yeah, I got loads of tips on how to deal with dogs. But uh, yeah, in my opinion, uh, you know, the dogs are all different as well. Not all of them respond in the same way. So yeah, you can just, whatever you do, you can be unlucky and get bit, I guess. Um, Uh, nee, no, uh, Kurt Lopez says, do you need a Carnet de Passage in South America? No, you don't. Uh, in, in all of the Americas, you don't need a Carnet de Passage. You only need that in most parts of Africa and uh, Central Asia, like um, Pakistan, India. Oh, that's not Central Asia anymore. Iran um, and a little bit in, uh, in Southeast Asia as well but not in the Americas, so that's super easy. I mean, so far, on, up until Peru, the border crossings have just been a breeze. So fast, so easy, and yeah, you just make the temporary import permit in each border, and that's it. So um, normally it wouldn't be any problem, and yeah, the no got 60 days in Peru. Obviously now that's become a little bit of an issue, but okay, uh, we couldn't know that. B Bob says that mind trip was eye opening. Thanks. You know, you know how nervous I was for that episode because I am really, I really like to change my videos more towards documentary making, and I would love to do more of those types of videos and meet locals um, that have a special, um, special life or special job or even a normal life and a normal job, but just to give an impression on how people live uh, across the world. I would love to make more videos like that. And the one in Bolivia was kind of my first attempt. Um, so I was really worried what the reactions were going to be, <laughs> but they were so good. And I got so many positive reactions that I was like, okay, wow, I would love to uh, get more into that. And, uh, yeah, try to, to do that. The, the problem is I find it difficult. Yeah, how do you find these people? You know, how do you f find people that have a good story or that I can visit? Um, I find that a bit more difficult. Um, but yeah, I would love to put the, um, the emphasis more on other people's lives than my routine every day. Uh, that's just... Yeah, I think it's a lot more interesting to see what other people are doing. Um, so yeah, maybe that's also something that I can now use this time for that um, I'm now here uh, 
yeah, time to figure out how I can do that more and how I could get into touch with people to make these type of videos. Um. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. No, it's, I, I think it's really cool to have your feedback as well because, um, I mean, I don't, I, I would never, I don't think I would really do things just for YouTube. I mean, it's still, I'm filming my life, my trip. So I don't think I will, would do crazy things just to think, oh, maybe the viewers would like it. But if it's something that I would like to make and that you would like to see, I mean, I think then we hit the jackpot, right? Um, so yeah, that's actually, that, that will go on my list to do when I have time here to figure out how I can do more of those type of videos, um, how to set it up or something. Oh yeah. the the CC pony voices, the horse riding was awesome. That was a wonderful place. Yes, it was. Ah, if I would have been there during quarantine, I would not have left at all. I would have just stayed there, ride horses <laughs> every day and live in that tent. Ah, yeah. If I would have been there, then I would definitely would have stayed. Um, that was a great, great, great place. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Archie VA says motorcycling in the Netherlands is allowed during Corona. Oh, oh, are we still here? Something went wrong. Oh, oh, I think the live stream stopped. Am I still streaming? Oh, it's all going wrong. All going wrong. Am I still here? Oh, can somebody confirm if I'm still here? My entire screen went black. <laughs> okay, still live. Okay, good that I didn't say anything stupid or something. Okay, okay. Now everybody's saying yes. <laughs> okay, we're still here. Uh, okay, so we've been going now for, I was thinking to make this live chat about an hour and a half. Um, so it doesn't get super boring of me doing this uh, monologue thing. No, I'm talking to you, I'm talking to all of you. Okay. Oh dear, I should not have said, am I still here? Because now I'm getting hundreds of messages saying yes. <laughs> I am such an amateur when it comes to this live streaming thing. Every time I am struggling, I would think that YouTube would make this so easy, and yet it is not. It is not. Anyway, let's go back to the conversation because I thought the the whole live chat was flowing really, really well, and I was really feeling like I was actually chatting to all of you. And uh, what, what what were we talking about? What were we talking about now? Um, oh, about the the horse place in Argentina, I think right yeah i think we were talking about that yeah you're still streaming oh yeah and then before that about the documentary yeah okay okay let's see if we have another question <laughs> vodka vodka okay uh, oh somebody wants me to say good morning internet but then in hungarian no problem. Jo regelt internet. So, that's also done. Uh, all right. I just go back to one of the questions that you guys popped in earlier. Um, oh, yeah. Maybe this is a nice one. Uh, oh, let me first thank Daniel Noren. Thank you very much. I got a question from Colin Vincent. And you asked me... Of all the places you have visited on your tours, has anywhere impressed you so much you would consider living there one day? The answer is no. I mean, how bad is that, right? I mean, there are a lot of places that I absolutely loved, or like I just said, the horse farm in Patagonia. Would have loved to stay there a few months. Um, and there, yeah, there, there, there have been so many places around the world that I really enjoyed, but for me, I never, until now, eh, things might change, but until now, I never had a place where I thought, yes, I, I would live here. For me, then in the end, 
the Netherlands is that that is still my country and even though I travel most of the time <laughs> I think in the past uh, 10 years I've been away for I don't know seven or something uh, if you if you add it all up um, but still to live live then I think it's still the Netherlands yeah I don't know maybe it's, it's kind of sad but hey <laughs> um, yeah oh wow Joan Walsh went horseback riding in Torres del Paine in February just spectacular yeah I can imagine that that is such a beautiful beautiful place yeah oh <laughs> The tessellator says when you get to the US, get a GS1250. Oh, no way, no way. Those bikes are so big and heavy. They're, I cannot imagine myself riding one of those just so big. I sat, I sat on a couple, or maybe that was a... I don't know if I sat on a 1250, definitely the 1200, one or two. And just having this... No, it's just... I don't feel comfortable, I think. Uh, yeah yeah the road is a valid place to go home yeah <laughs> oh that now I understand the vodka somebody else said vodka and I was like what are you talking about no this is of course water I'm not drinking vodka here that would be very weird oh now Lee you should read your super chats okay Wait, that's a good one. Where is he? Is he super chats. Where is my super chat? See, this is what I mean. How many times have I done this? And I'm still horrible, terrible at this. Um. Where do I see this now? I only see it at the top. Sometimes... Can somebody help me? <laughs> um, oh, Saint Germain says, will this live stream be uploaded on YouTube? Yes, uh, like uh, as always, um, it will be uploaded. Nice wallpaper. Thanks. <laughs> um, where is where is the super chat thing now? Okay. Oh dear. Oh here, I think. No. Oh, oops. What did I do? Okay, anyway, I uh, forget it. I, I am going to uh, pop out. Ah, there we go. Uh -huh. Let me see. Uh, okay, let me get this one again here. Uh, oh, yeah. There was one thing, a comment from somebody called That Idealist. And you said, I salute you for always trying to upload your videos within days of filming them. Although the downside is you don't get ad revenues in times like these. The fact that you don't, it gives the uploads a fresh feel. Yeah, about that, that's actually a good topic. Yeah, I noticed normally i would always have my content lag behind like one or two weeks minimum um just because of reasons which i explained before that uh, it's kind of like a personal safety thing uh and yeah there are just people that try to find me sounds very dodgy but yeah uh, that's just the way it is um uh, and i just don't want to be in a hotel or whatever and then uh yeah, have all these people calling to the hotel where I'm staying or something like that. So that's why there's a delay. And I think that's quite common. I think most YouTubers will always have a delay. But I kind of, when the whole Corona crisis started, I realized that the delay was not working very well because things were changing so fast that, you know, if I would bring out a video two weeks later the entire world was different and a lot of people you know were like oh, i can't believe nobody's wearing masks or stuff like that and i had such a hard time explaining oh, yeah but this was recorded before that i decided okay um because now this is such a i would say that um actueel what's the english word for this actualiteit this is so 
current activities, I have no idea how to say this, um, um, that, that I decided to have the, the content very close or as close as possible to when I recorded it. So it made a little bit more sense. Um, but yeah, if I'm back on the road again, then uh, I would like to have this uh, this lag again. And another reason to do that is also because uh, I'm bringing out content on um, strict days. So now I have, on Monday, Wednesday and Friday, I bring out a video. But if it's really close to where I actually am, you know, sometimes if it rains for two days and I cannot drive or ride, then the videos already catch up with me. Or if I don't have internet and I cannot upload a video, they catch up with me. So by having this kind of one or two week uh, buffer, uh, I can also make sure that I am able to bring out the content on the days that I want. So that's another way. Otherwise, it's just and it's just going to be stressful then if, if I don't have so much lag then I just feel like oh I have to bring out a video today and yeah it's just become like unnecessarily uh, stressful I guess uh, oh <laughs> Pim uit Utrecht hopelijk wel weer meet and greet uh, definitely not uh, I mean now with the whole corona crisis it's definitely not uh, possible um, I don't know if I will do that again uh, oh <laughs> Noralie, please tell us, how old are you? Maybe 28, 29? No, well, thank you, but no, uh, not anymore, unfortunately. I'm now 32. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, free range human. I hope so too. <laughs> yeah. Um. Let me see. Thank you, Michael Brown and Trucker Daddy. Do you have any footage? Oh, wait, stop. Why can I not pause it? Wait. Do you have any footage to publish or Reddit? Edit. Yeah, I have plenty of stuff which I can still use, I think. Um, I will have to think about what I'm going to make. But earlier somebody suggested maybe a best of video and a worst of video. That's, that's probably a good idea. So I'm thinking of doing something with that. Volatile. Oh, maybe. I don't even know what that means. Tim. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, somebody asked me about... <laughs> Kenneth Russell asked me, among all the countries you've traveled through, which one has the best cuisine and how did you like the dish? Yeah, that's still Asia, unfortunately. Although I do, I did quite like Peruvian food. I thought that was quite good. Um, but Indian food is still my favorite. And I really like the food in Malaysia as well, Thailand. Um, but yeah, Asia is still, yeah, yeah still my favorite I would say uh. oh <laughs> oh actually himayu 19 says how you stay fit well I wouldn't say I'm super super fit but um, actually I just started with uh, these home workouts uh, from Joe Wicks um, uh, the the body coach and I've been following him for some time, but you know, here's the cool thing, right? So if you don't know who he is then check out his um, YouTube channel, um, he exploded uh, quite recently, or oh, he was already big, but now he's really exploded. And he does like these live sessions every day. It's like half hour workout and every workout, like 250,000 people join in live. It's insane from all over the world. It's super cool. And you know what's actually the coolest thing? Okay, I think this is really quite funny. Uh, maybe I shouldn't, maybe you don't think it's funny, but anyway, he follows me on Instagram. <laughs> uh, somebody noticed that, and then I was like, oh my god, Joe Wicks follows me on Instagram. I think that is the coolest thing ever. Um, yeah, awesome guy and um, really fun. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to do his workouts as well. Um, so yeah. 
and now give him a little shout out not that he needs it but hey <clears throat> Gilbert Bates says so you've developed a taste for llamas maybe goats too in Peru I don't think I don't know about goats but they do eat the, um, the guinea pigs in Peru um, cuy it's called and on my first visit to, to Peru like uh, eight years ago or something I tried it and I thought okay never again I don't want to eat guinea pig um, it just looks horrible they're just yeah it just doesn't look very nice um, I don't want to eat it anymore now I'll stick to uh, yeah alpaca I was eating a lot of alpaca mostly alpaca in uh, in Peru in lockdown um, which is quite nice it's kind of a little bit like llama a bit better actually uh, they're also more expensive alpacas than uh, llamas I think or is it the other way around no I think alpacas are more expensive can't remember now <laughs> um, okay oh yeah Fortnite and news is have you did you eat quinoa yeah loads and loads of quinoa and that's actually quite cool because in Peru I mean quinoa mostly grows in Peru and Bolivia I believe um, and then it's exported to Europe and it's all funky uh, superfood and all of that but here in the Netherlands quinoa is usually like as a salad for example um, it's a little bit boring what we do with it and but in Peru in Lampa Juan or his wife cooked it they gave me all sorts of things with quinoa a quinoa paste and quinoa this with quinoa they even have quinoa like juice and they have so many different varieties of quinoa and they know really well obviously how to prepare it so i ate a lot of quinoa yeah and apparently that's super healthy i guess yeah thomas gillam he also didn't like roasted cui looks more like a rat than a pig yeah <laughs> i agree it looks a bit cooked it looks a bit like a rat it's just not very appetizing um, oh Wheaton Cox said uh, when you get back in the saddle toss a few more geological tidbits in each episode yeah I've, I have a feeling that a lot of people like it when I say some things about geology um, so yeah that's cool I, I'll try to do that a bit more um, I always think that people find it very boring <laughs> but uh, it seems like uh, that's not actually the case so that's cool thanks for that feedback thank you Sid Kulp oh thanks uh, you say as a middle school teacher I could see how your travels would make such an interesting way for kids to learn a school class and that just yeah I don't know warms my heart I think it's amazing and yeah never thought that would ever happen of course um, Ricardo Neto is asking me about my phone how do you do with the phone buy new sim and internet cards in every country yes that's usually very very cheap and easy like usually cost like I don't know five dollars for a sim card or something and then just put on some prepaid internet works very well um, Oh, Frank Day says, where does Joe stream from? Perhaps you could do an episode with him. I think he's in the UK um, because he's streaming at nine in the morning, UK time. And that's 10 o'clock here. So it must be um, UK. Yeah. Yeah, he's a biker. Yeah, Paul Smith says, Joe Wicks is a biker. Yeah, that's true. That's probably how he find, found me. Yeah. Okay, more people saying that they like the geology lessons. Oh, that's cool. Um. <laughs> cool. Oh, wait. Wayne Timothy. Norley, how many languages do you speak? I love hearing you speak Spanish. It's amazing how fluent you are. Oh, thank you. I'm definitely, I do not consider my flu myself fluid in Spanish at all but i get by and um, yeah since i started in um, buenos aires it, it gotten quite a bit better again uh, i just try to keep on learning and keep on practicing 
Um, definitely not fluent, but yeah, it's it's a lot better than most of other languages I speak. But uh, yeah, in high school, I had seven languages <laughs> at school and not all of them for a long time, but some of them I had for uh, six years. So I had six years of Dutch, English, Latin, um, German, French. Um, and then I did also a little bit of Spanish on the side and I had old Greek. Um, then I learned quite some Portuguese um, because I did capoeira for some time and I've also worked and lived in Rio de Janeiro. So then, then I was speaking Portuguese. Now I've forgotten most of it. If I try to speak Portuguese now, I think it will come out of some strange mix of Portuguese and Spanish. Also called Portanol, I believe. Um, but if I would go back to Brazil, then hopefully it will come back again. I'm losing my voice here. I am speaking so much. One Benny Nine says reindeer soup is the best. I don't know about that. I did have some. I traveled in Mongolia years back, and then I was eating a lot of reindeer type products. Can't remember if I had the soup, but yeah, no, nah, it wasn't really my favorite to be honest. Um. Oh, Andy Cooper said, did you get a PhD? No, it was the plan. I was going to do a PhD and I went to Australia to collect rocks uh, to do the PhD on in geochemistry. And I collected the rocks, sent them to the Netherlands. And then I was planning to travel for a couple of months and then come back to the Netherlands and start a PhD. And then I was traveling in in Australia, New Zealand, I went to India, and then when I was in India, that was my first time in India in 2010, and then I decided I didn't want to do the PhD anymore and I wanted to travel, and that's when, well, yeah, then I traveled for two and a half years um, that time as well, so yeah, <laughs> that didn't go, to, go as planned, but yeah, I never regretted not doing the PhD, to be honest. I have zero regrets, yeah. Um, oh yeah Peter Singleton in Mongolia it would have been marmot yeah I also had marmot which I think is actually I don't know if it was illegal then I do think it's illegal now um, and yeah they cook it in a really special way they put rocks in the fire then open up the animal the dead animal and then put the hot rocks inside and then sew it back and then the, it's being cooked from the inside out and yeah it's quite bizarre I also didn't really like that to be honest and it's also something that I would never ever try again but that was in my earlier travels and in that time I was really trying all sorts of kind of exotic foods and and tarantulas and all of that and yeah now I kind of changed when it comes to that and I don't want to eat all these exotic animals but yeah um, oh thanks Joan Walsh that you like that uh, video in Bolivia as well. Yeah. Oh, hi Jason Carter from Stuttgart, Germany. Welcome here. All right, so I, I have about five minutes left. Um, so let me see if I can um, answer one of these questions and then we're gonna wrap it up. Let me see. Uh, which one? Oh no, I, I think I've already answered most of them. Uh, oh yeah, the H. Kluivert says, can you address us in Dutch? Just a few lines. Ik vind het zo leuk dat we landgenoten zijn. Which means, I think it's so cool that we are countrymen. Uh, ja, wat moet ik zeggen? Oké, okay, een paar zinnetjes dan. Uh, ik weet niet of je nu kijkt. Als je nu kijkt, dan bij deze. Een paar zinnen in het Nederlands. Uh, dan ga ik nu weer terug naar het Engels. Anders begrijpt niemand er meer wat van. Alright, for all the non-Dutch people. Uh, that was some Dutch. Uh, <laughs> not the prettiest language ever. But hey, um, I was born this way. Uh, Mariano Persevera. Do you listen to music? Riding Antano. Almost always. 
I love it. Only if it's the trail is super technical or something like that, um, then I don't listen to music. Then I really want to focus on the road. But other than that, yeah, I listen to music all the time. Uh, I have Spotify. Um, so and then my phone is connected to my uh, system inside my helmet, and then I can just listen to uh, whatever. <laughs> No wonder you're losing your voice, Phil. Oh, that's because of the dark. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh, funny. Um, Richard Thompson, are you hoping to return to South America when this virus is over? Yes, yes. So if you missed the beginning of the live stream, uh, you can watch it back later on the channel. But if you missed the beginning, then um, yes, of course, the, the plan is, the idea is to come back to Peru and finish what I've started. But it all depends on how things will develop in the coming months and what will happen with the temporary import permit, if I can suspend it and uh, all of that uh, sort of thing. But it's definitely the plan. Finish what I started. Yeah, so maybe before we end, maybe, um, yeah, I'm thinking uh, to ask you whether we should do this again sometime, have another live chat, um, maybe in two or three weeks from now or something like that, uh, do another live chat. Um, I already said it before as well, but I tried, I will try to bring out something every week. So either bring out a compilation video or a blooper video or do a live chat. And yeah, in the meantime, I'm working super hard on my other projects, other Itchy Boots projects, uh, which you um, will hear all about it. Uh, if you missed it, uh, subscribe on itchyboots.com uh, to the newsletter. Then you'll be the first to know when, when I'm just going to promote it again. Sorry, this is shameless, shameless self-promotion. But if you're tuning in later, look at this awesome buffs. Cool, right? So um, when I will put these in the, in the, in the itchyboots shop on itchyboots.com, then I will announce it via the newsletter. Um, Oh, now everybody, okay. I get a lot of yeses about the live chat. Um, that's awesome. I also think this live chat worked better than uh, the previous ones. I feel like there was more uh, interaction uh, in this one and I could read better what you were saying. So um, I thought this was a really good one. Uh, I, I do think also with the next one, uh, I will announce it again before and you can ask me some questions. Um, because for me, it's a bit easier to already sort out a few questions, which um, I also like to talk about with you. So I do think that, uh, oh yeah, t-shirts next time too, says Gary Andrew. Yeah, I'll also think about t-shirts. I don't think, don't know if it will already be next time, but uh, definitely soon. Um, oh, thanks, Alex G. I like the geology info and the culture experience. Okay, oh, it's super cool to see all these super um, enthusiastic comments of you. Uh, that makes me quite happy. Um, yeah, everybody all yes for the live chat. Cool. Okay, so then I am going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for joining me on this live chat. Oh, maybe I should already um, prepare this because otherwise I'm going to stare at this screen thinking how on earth i have to end this oh yeah like this okay okay prepared um so thank you for joining me on this live chat i really enjoyed it there were some really cool questions and um yeah now, now, now i'm still reading it because a lot of people are saying things <laughs> anyway um i hope i answered some i couldn't answer all of them unfortunately but i hope i answered some of the most important ones especially now in this moment and uh, that you understand what's going on anyway i hope all of you just please stay safe and stay healthy you and your families um i would just yeah be super sad if something would happen to any of you i value all of you that are following me on this journey and i think it's awesome that we have such a yeah i don't know quite sweet community where people are mostly nice to each other i think nowadays on the internet that can be a very rare thing to see um so yeah that just 
makes me extremely happy that um, there are so many people here that uh, just say nice things to me but also to each other and uh, yeah I think that's a quite a special thing nowadays um, so thank you all for joining and um, yeah what else um, next week Friday I will try to bring out again some content so stay tuned for that um, I think I'm just going to end the way I always do because it's very easy for me because <laughs> I've already said it a hundred times um, so I really hope you joined this um, enjoyed now I'm saying it wrong I hope you enjoyed this live chat if you did please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below and then I'll see you in the next video oh and and and